We've introduced some concepts. What, are, what do we mean by data communications, links, networks? We've talked about signals, and then we've looked at performance metrics in the previous topic. Now we're going to go into the details of the, the basics of communications and look really at signals. And look at signals, communication signals, in a mathematical perspective in, in this topic. And then in the next topics, uh, a, a few more details about how do we take, let's say, our data, think of bits. If we have digital data, how do we take a sequence of bits and convert them into some signal that can be sent across some link as an electrical signal or generally electromagnetic signal? Many of the examples I'll use will talk about transmitting digital data, zeros and ones is the data we want to communicate, whether it's a file, like a text file or a video, it can be converted to a binary, and then that's the data, and then we convert it to a signal to be sent across a link. But the same signals are used for analog data as well. Like when I'm talking, I'm communicating analog data to you. It's not digital. So we'll see examples of data as we go through. Data transmission. Let's first introduce some simple terminology. We're focusing on, a, a, think of a link, a single link. There's a transmitter and a receiver. And we want to get data from the transmitter to the receiver across some link, or generally we'll say across some medium, the thing between the transmitter and receiver. And what's transferred, so we want to get data from transmitter to receiver, the way that we do it is we send some signal, some communication <coughs> signal, which is in the form of electromagnetic waves, an electromagnetic signal. And the examples I'll use, think of a sine wave as a very simple representation of electromagnetic wave. But electromagnetic actually contains two components, the, the electrical component, electro, as well as the magnetic component, a magnet magnetic field and electric field. But we'll just think of it as a sine wave and we'll use that as the concept. So, get data by sending a signal from transmitter to receiver via some medium. What types of medium? Well, we've got, classify the medium as either guided or unguided. Guided is when that signal is as the name suggests, guided somehow by some materials in some direction. And really that means wired. So the signal may be electricity flowing through a copper conductor. And the signal effectively is maintained within that wire or with the insulation around that wire. The signal does not disperse much. So we'll look in the next topic about these media in detail like copper wires called twisted pair, the LAN cables, coaxial cable which you may use for cable internet or, or cable TV, uh, and optical fiber, and so examples of guided media, wires or cables. The signal, think of the signal is guided within the conductor, or within the wire. Unguided is wireless. So we don't have a material, we transmit our signal through the air. No wires. Through the air, through the water in some cases, or in a theoretical case through a vacuum. So guided is wired, unguided is wireless. With, so we're focusing on getting from transmitter to receiver across a link, it may be guided or unguided. Usually in most of our cases, or examples will refer to one device sends to one other device, a point-to-point -point configuration. Two devices share the medium. We have a cable from one computer to another. The medium is that wire where our signal propagates across. It's shared by the two devices which are connected. So the wire connects into the LAN cable, LAN port of my laptop and into the LAN port of this PC there's two devices sharing that medium. That's the most typical case we think of. But we can have multi-point configurations where there are more than two devices sharing a medium. 
An example? Someone? What's an example of a medium where we have multi-point communications? Air. Okay, wireless. Typically, not always, but we always typically think, we typically think of wireless communications as multi-point. Some cases we'll think of it as point-to-point. -point. That is, when I'm talking to you, I'm generating a signal coming out of my mouth, and there are multiple receivers of that signal. So it's not one-to-one, -one, it's not point-to-point, -point, it's one-to-many, or multiple points are sharing this medium. So it's different configurations of our links. Point-to-point -point generally is the easiest. There's not much we need to do to, to get that to work. But with multipoint, we need to deal with the fact that there may be some interference. It's also the case in point-to-point, -point, but more so in multipoint communications that it becomes a little bit more complex to, to make sure it will work well. And when we communicate, we also look at the direction. And the terminology we use is simplex, half-duplex, and full-duplex. Simplex is a communications medium where we send on in one direction only. For example, broadcast TV. There's a TV station somewhere, they have a transmitter, some TV tower maybe, or if it's satellite TV, they go via the satellite, and they transmit a signal and your TV with the antenna receives the signal. So it's going from the TV station to your TV. Your TV does not send anything back to the TV station. So it's simplex communications. Full duplex at the other end is a, think of a link where we can send from A to B and at the same time be sending from B to A. So both directions at the same time. Half du duplex both directions are possible, but only one at a time. A can send to B, but if A is sending to B, B cannot send back to A. They must wait until A is no longer sending to B. That's half duplex. Uh, handheld radios, uh, sometimes called CB radios or, or private radios, are an example where you, you press a button to talk. You press the button, talk, the other person hears and listens, then you release the button, and then they press the button and talk back to you. So we can communicate in both directions, but only one person at a time. That's half duplex. Any questions about this introductory terminology? What is this lecture? Which medium, which configuration, which direction? The lecture, which medium do we use? Guided or unguided? When I'm talking to you, when we're lecturing. First, medium. Unguided, we're using wireless communications. Well, there's some form of wired communications if we use the microphone, but assume there's no microphone. If I just talk, then wireless all the way, from my mouth to your ears. Configuration. This lecture. Point-to-point point or multi-point? Multi-point. One transmitter, multiple receivers. More than two. Direction. Hands up for simplex. Hands up for full duplex. Hands up for half duplex. I prefer half duplex. If I talk, you don't talk. But if you have a question, then do so. But don't interrupt other people. Wow. Okay, so we prefer full du half duplex. Sometimes it turns out people get excited and talk a lot and it becomes full duplex. But let's not make it simplex. Make sure you ask some questions during the lecture. But try not to interrupt too many other people. For some reason, I've never fixed the title of this slide. It's wrong, or it doesn't, it's not appropriate. 
maybe a better title for this slide, and you can change it, is electromagnetic signals. Okay? It's a copy and paste that I didn't fix at some stage. So electromagnetic signals, those three things of frequency, spectrum, and bandwidth come up later. So the signals that we use to transmit the data from transmitter to receiver. The transmitter generates an electromagnetic signal. So my LAN card generates a signal and outputs it onto the, in the case of a LAN cable, I don't have it, the LAN cable has copper wires inside. So it outputs an electrical signal onto those copper wires. And that signal propagates to the receiver. The signal represents the data. And I think we've mentioned before a simple case would be if you think of a signal, a high signal could represent bit one and a low signal, say in terms of voltage, could represent a bit zero. We'll see some other schemes. We're going to, in this topic, we're going to look at the mathematics of those signals and see that a, a complex communication signal can actually be broken down into simple signals that we can analyze and design. If I ask you to draw in an exam or a quiz a signal, what would you draw? A simple signal. If someone does this, a, 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 a digital, a square wave, okay? And another one? A sine wave, okay? A sinusoid. So that's what we'll deal with and we'll see that even complex communication signals like sending a radio signal from my laptop to this access point we can think in the perspective of just a set of sinusoids, sine waves. So that's what we'll go through today. The two domains we'll come to later. We'll focus on the time domain. I'll introduce the frequency domain after we cover the time domain. Very simple stuff today. Uh, some waveforms or example signals. We can distinguish between analog and digital. Analog, it varies in a continuous manner over time. Digital, discrete manner. So digital signal maintains some level for some period of time and then instantaneously changes to another level and so on. So just the difference between analog and digital here in terms of a signal. And if you look at these plots, this axis is time, so things are changing over time, and this axis is shown as volts, sometimes also power, watts, but the, the signal amplitude, the, the height of the signal, measured in volts typically. If you think of an electrical signal coming out of my laptop, we can measure the signal amplitude. Any problems, analog versus digital, in terms of signals? Okay. Continuously varying versus a discrete variation. Going back to simple signals, some concepts. This is from high school physics, so this is nothing new to you. We can talk about periodic signals. These two are examples of periodic signals. They, they repeat. And these two are examples of aperiodic signals. There's no repetition. Okay. They, they continuously change. In much of our analysis, we'll, we'll look at periodic signals, but in practice, aperiodic signals are common. Nothing interesting there, period. Let's look at a simple sine wave. Again, a, a refresher from when? High school. Sinusoids. An equation for a sine wave. The signal strength as a function of time, do I have my pen? I have a flat battery, I think. A mouse. The signal strength as a function of time, S is the signal strength or the amplitude in those previous plots, T is time generally can be written as the amplitude or the peak amplitude, A times by a sine, the sine function, of 2 pi ft plus 
some phase where 2 times pi f will, will be the frequency of the signal, t is time, and phase will see is related to the relative position of that signal to some starting point, to zero. Three components, or th three key parameters in this equation. Sine is just a function, 2 and pi are just constants, T is the, the input parameter. We have peak amplitude A, which is a multiplier on the sine function. We have frequency F, which will be the rate at which the signal repeats. And we have the phase phi here. Let's just remind you of how those impact on the shape of a signal. These are four plots of that, that equation with different values of A, F and the phase. And it's probably easier to read, maybe a little bit easier, but it's hard to read on the screen. The top left plot if you read here, the amplitude is 1, the frequency is 1, and the phase is 0. So if you plug those values into this equation, A is 1, F is 1, and phase is 0, it becomes what? Sine 2 pi t. Sine 2 pi t, where t is time. And in our plot, Time varies, in this case, from 0 to 1.5 seconds. So sine of 2 pi t, if t is 0, sine of 0 is 0. If t is 0 0.25, then sine of 2 pi t delivers an output of 1. And we get our sine plot. What's the period of this signal? What's the period? One what? No, one is correct, one something. What is the value of the period? One second. The period, remember, is the, the duration in time of one cycle. So, one wave. It goes up, comes back down, and back to the origin here. So the period is from 0 to 1. Period is 1 second. How many times does a cycle repeat per second? How many cycles per second? In 1 second, how many cycles? 1. Therefore the frequency is 1. The frequency is the measure of the number of cycles per second. The repetitions per second. Frequency is 1. The, f the period is the inverse of the frequency. If a frequency is 1, the period is 1 divided by 1, also 1 in this case. The amplitude, or actually I always call it amplitude, it's the peak amplitude, is the maximum height. It goes up to plus 1 and it comes down to minus 1 here. The phase we'll see as we get to the other ones. It's the offset from the origin. When time is zero, our signal is zero. If we change the phase, that will change. Move to the right. Same equation, except peak amplitude A is 0 0.5. Same frequency, same period, same phase, but you see the amplitude is shrunk to half. That's all. Bottom left. Amplitude, peak amplitude is 1, frequency is 2. Within one second, there are two repetitions. Two repetitions per second, frequency of 2. Two cycles per second, and how do we measure frequency? How do we measure frequency? What are the units? Hertz. 
So a frequency of 2 hertz, HZ, is the, the symbol or the abbreviation. Frequency of 2 hertz, 2 repetitions per, se per second. Period of... What's the period of this bottom left signal? A half a second. Period is 1 divided by frequency. If the frequency is 2, the period is a half. This is nothing new to all of you, I'm sure. The time for one repetition is half a second. Any questions on the first three? Just, they just illustrate the impact of the peak amplitude and the frequency. And the last one Im illustrates the impact of the phase. Amplitude 1, frequency 1, phase, what we call a phase offset of pi over 4. Phase is a measure of angle, measured in radians, pi divided by 4 radians. You see the, the impact on our waveform compared to the top left and the bottom right. It shifts it along. So think of this one, it's been shifted back some portion relative to this one. So we don't start at zero, we start at 0.7 something with this phase offset. It offsets in time, the, the original sine wave. Any questions so far on sine waves? Remember that equation. Let's have a look at some. What, why do we introduce this? Because our signals will represent as sine, sine waves, sinusoids. But more complex than just a sing single sinusoid, what we'll eventually come up with with communication signals is if you add two sinusoids together, you get another wave. And if you add multiple together, you can start to generate communication signals to represent the data w that we want to send. So that's what we'll end up with uh, with this topic. We combine sinusoids together. Let's go through a few examples. And I'll try and plot some and you can answer some questions about them. I need to remember how to do this. Some simple... What do I do? Octave. I've just got some mathematics software that will produce some plots of sine waves. Okay? Just so you can see that the impact of the different parameters. And then we'll start to combine them uh, just so everyone's clear. But to run this software, I need to set things up. So just bear with me as I set up the, the picture so it's nice to display. We're going to create some plots. And to do a bit quickly, I'll just I'll copy and paste some commands that I did before, and then it will make sense. Just set up the axes, the labels. And we're going to plot a sine wave from time 0 to 1 second. Very simple. And set the ax axis values. And let's get ready. Start simple and then... You don't have to worry about those commands. It was just setting up this picture. Now I'm going to create a plot. On the x-axis, we'll have time. And then on the time here, on the y-axis, we'll have the signal, the signal strength, our sinusoid. The notation may be a little bit confusing to get started with, but you'll make sense of it. 1 times sine... 2 times pi times 1 times t 
plus zero. I'll zoom in, then we'll zoom back out so people can see. I'm going to plot time versus our signal. Where the signal, the peak amplitude, A, is this multiply is 1, I'll set it to 1. Sine of 2 times pi, the frequency I'll set to 1, and the phase to 0. The simplest signal we can start with. And I'll just make the color of that plot to be blue. Exciting? Okay. Same as what we saw before. Let's just vary a little bit. Let's change the frequency from 1 to 2. 2 times pi times 2t. The general formula 2 pi ft. And you see that the frequency changes. And we can change maybe a green one, we can change the peak amplitude to say 1.5 and also change the frequency to 3. What are we going to see? The frequency is 3, the peak amplitude is 1.5. Try and think of what you're going to see. Okay. Within one second, 0 to 1, the frequency is 3, so we see three repetitions of that, psych, that sine wave. And the peak amplitude is 1.5. It goes from 0 to plus 1.5 down to minus 1.5. Let's try and look at the phase a little bit, because that's maybe the hardest one to visualize or to, to recognize what the impact will be. Uh, let's start again with a clean plot. Let's try again. Our first one, we had a phase of zero, plus zero, so plus nothing here. Let's change the phase, keep everything else the same. A red one. The phase is measured, it's an angle, it's measured in radians. Okay. So not in degrees, you can convert it to degrees if you like. Uh, measured in radians. Pi over 4. How many degrees? How many degrees? Pi over 4. Forty-five. A, 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 a circle is two pi. Three hundred sixty degrees is two pi. So pi is one eighty. Pi on two is ninety. Pi on four will be forty-five degrees. So we, a phase offset. You can see the shift. You can think it's shifted back in time. Pi over 2, a phase of 90 degrees, shifts it back even further, another 45 degrees. 3 pi on 4, and pi, what will we get? A phase of pi. What will our sine wave look like? Anyone plot it with their finger? A phase of pi. What shape will it be? should be upside down. 
that is goes down first then up okay so we've shifted all back to this point where we go down first and then up a phase of 2 pi 2 pi is the same as zero all the way around. Okay. 360 degrees is the same as zero in terms of the phase offset in, in a side. So, we can vary... Okay, let's summarize. With a sinusoid, we can vary three parameters. The peak amplitude, sometimes just referred to as the amplitude, the frequency, and the phase. And in fact, w what we're going to study in signals is that there are many uh, different approaches of varying those parameters to create different real signals. Who's listened to radio before? What channel? Not internet radio. FM. What's F mean? Frequency modulation. What's the other form of radio? AM, amplitude modulation. So with radio, there are two common approaches where to, cr to send the, the audio, radio is audio, music and people talking, to send that as a signal from the radio tower to your car or your radio receiver, they, with FM, they apply some approach which involves changing the frequency of, the, of some signal sent, frequency modulation, and with AM they change the amplitude of the signal. So we get amplitude modulation. We'll see them in the signal encoding techniques. And some other ones which, again, are just changing these three parameters. Amplitude, frequency and phase. Someone I asked before, how would you draw a sign, how would you draw a signal? And someone drew a square wave. Can you create a square wave using sine waves? A square wave, just a digital waveform. Let's try. Because that's what we think of in terms of what we call digital signaling. We can send plus some voltage for some time and maybe zero voltage or minus some voltage and hold that level to create this digital waveform. Let's clear this and try some other things. Now, for, for these demonstrations, let's set the phase to zero. So I'll remove the plus zero just to ignore that. And, and we'll set the, in the initial one, I'll set the peak amplitude. Instead of typing one times, there's no need to type one times. It's just sine, okay, just to save some space. Sine 2 pi, and for an example, let's set the frequency to 2. What color is K? Black. Okay, here's our base signal. It has a frequency of 2, 2 hertz, 2 repetitions within 1 second. Let's try a different one. Let's change the peak amplitude to be 1 third instead of 1, 1 third. And let's change the frequency to be, instead of 2 hertz, to be 6 hertz. So it's 2 pi 2 times 3t, or 2 pi 6t. Go back to our lecture notes. The general formula, peak amplitude sine 2 pi ft, 2 pi t times the frequency. So in this specific example, 2 pi 6t, frequency is 6. You'll see why I write it as 2 times 3 in a moment. It'll make more sense then. Just a different sine wave. 
one third of the height, the peak amplitude is one third, three times the frequency, frequency of six, so you see three times the number of repetitions in one second. Just two sine waves. Now we'll add them together. So what do we get if we add the two together? Anyone want to predict or draw the shape? Add the two together. That's a little bit harder to visualize. But, okay, if you look at the shape, we add, at each point in time, add the two values together. Okay, so at this peak point, it's the value there, 1, plus whatever this is, minus 0.3. Okay, so we 0.7. So add them together and see what we get. So take the first one and I'll add the second one. Let's. The blue one is the shape that we get when we add those two sinusoids together. You can see it's not this smooth sine wave anymore. The peak has some two humps at the top because of this one-third uh, small one added together produces that shape. It starts at zero. It crosses zero here, goes down, and then back up at zero, and so on. What's the frequency of the blue signal? What is the frequency of the blue signal? In one second, you can see it goes up, it comes back to the origin, and then comes back to the origin here. Two repetitions in one second, it's a frequency of two hertz of that blue signal. The first sine wave had a frequency of 2 hertz. The second one had a frequency of 6 hertz. When we added them together, the resulting sine wave had a frequency of 2 hertz. We'll see that we'll take advantage of that as we go through. Why do we do that? Let's see why we'll do it. Let's add some more to that one. I'll draw it again, but without the two components. I'll draw that one again, but just the resulting wave. Okay, so that was the resulting wave, just to be a bit clearer. Frequency of two hertz, two repetitions in one second. Peak amplitude. Is it one? Not quite. Okay, so the peak, have to be careful there. I want to change the peak amplitude. Same plot, exactly the same equation except I'm going to multiply everything on f times by 4 over pi. So it's going to be 4 over pi sine 2 pi 2t two plus 4 over pi times 1 third sine 2 pi 6t. Everything's multiplied by 4 over pi. What will that do? What will, this will be a red one. What will the red plot look like? Can you visualize what the red one, when I press enter, will look like? Multiplying by something out the front, what does it do? Multiplying by something out the front just changes the peak amplitude, increases the height. As we saw here, we change the peak amplitude from 1 to 0 0.5, the height was cut in half. Here we're just changing the 
peak amplitude by multiplying by 4 over pi. Just moves things up. Okay. Why did I do that? It'll make sense soon. So there's still a question, why would I multiply by 4 over pi? It'll make sense as we go through the next few steps. So let's focus on the red one. We've got two sinusoids added together. Sine 2 pi 2t, one third sine 2 pi 6t, add them together, multiply by 4 over pi. Those two sinusoids, I'll call them two components of the resulting signal. The resulting signal is made up of two different components. Let's add a third component and see what shape we get. And then we'll come back and explain why we're doing this. So I'll clear this figure. To make it a bit nicer, we'll plot a original there's our original sine wave. But for now, I'm multiplying everything by 4 over pi. So it's gone up above 1 there. 4 over pi is about 1.3. And then our second one had two components. We added this red one. We added an extra part of 1 third of the original one and 2 pi 60. And that's what we got there. 4 over pi sine 2 pi 2t plus 1 third sine 2 pi 6t. The way that I wrote it, you'll start to see some pattern arriving. 1 third sine 2 pi 2 3t. The 3 and the 3 here are related. The way that I've chose them uh, is that they're the same. I want to add another component, a third sine wave. I'm going to add one which is one-fifth of the original size, a smaller one. And the frequency will be 2 pi 2 times 5t. And instead of typing it, I'll just copy and paste so I don't make mistakes. It wraps around, but it, the three sine waves, sine 2 pi 2t, two one third sine 2 pi 2 times 3t, one fifth sine 2 pi 2 times 5t. And in green, we get this. What shape is the green one getting, starting to resemble? This original one, the blue one, was the original sine wave, smooth. The red one has a couple of humps at the top, two humps there, so it's not as smooth as the sine wave. The green one actually has three humps at the top. The way that I've chosen adding these sine waves together is producing a shape, and what I want to do is add more sine waves until I get a shape of a digital waveform, square. Okay. So that's why I've chosen the values in this way because I know that if I keep adding these sine waves in such a pattern the resulting signal will be a perfect square waveform. The, trying to demonstrate the point that what we can do is create a, a digital waveform just by combining sine sinusoids. And in fact any communication signal doesn't matter the, the, the shape of the resulting signal we can think of it as made up of adding together sine waves. And that makes the analysis and of communication systems much easier. Let's add another component. Same as before, 1 fifth sine 2 pi 5 t, 1 seventh sine 2 pi 2 times 7 t. You see the pattern? One third 2 times 3, 1 fifth, 2 times 5 the frequency, 1 seventh, getting smaller and increasing the frequency of those individual components. It's a bit harder to see there. 
I can keep adding components, but to illustrate the point, I've created one with something like 30 odd components. It took me a long time to type this one. Goes up to, I think, 59. Okay, the, the same pattern. 1 over 27, 2 times 27, 1 over 29, 2 times 29. We'll see the pattern in a moment. And we're close to a, a square wave. Okay, there are some variations here. Okay, but the black one, we're getting close to a perfect square wave. How do we get a perfect square wave? How do we get it even nicer than this? What do I do? What do I type in? How do I get it so that those it doesn't go up and down just on those edges of the square wave? Uh, sigma is just the sum of. Okay, so here, all right, I'm typing the actual sum plus plus plus, and then do what? Add more what I call components. Add more these sine waves. One over sixty-one sine two pi two times sixty-one t. Add another one and another one. How many should I add? If I add an infinite number of components, you'll get a perfect square wave. But it would take me too long to type an infinite number of components. So, in theory, adding an infinite number of components in this pattern produces a perfect square wave. Any communication signal can be made up of combining sinusoids together. Let's, let's look at some of the properties of these resulting signals. In all of them, what's the frequency? It's the same. It's still 2 hertz. Didn't matter how many components we added there, the resulting signal is still 2 hertz. There's still rep 2 repetitions per second. The period is still half a second. This resulting signal, why is it 2 hertz? Maybe you can see in the pattern, if you can almost see here, I type 2 pi 2 times 57, 2 pi 2 times 59, 2 times 53, and so on. The original sine wave was 2 pi 2t. The frequency with 2, each component is a multiple of 2, an integer multiple of 2. If we have such a resulting signal where each component is an integer multiple of the frequency of the first component, then the resulting signal is the same as the first one. And that resulting, well, that, that first frequency, this 2 hertz in this case, is called the fundamental frequency. And the other frequencies, like 2 times 55, 110 hertz, are called harmonics, harmonic frequencies. Those details are not so important, although the fundamental frequency will be important when we do some analysis. What can we do next? Come back to our slides. Let's introduce some concepts, make note of some things. Uh, We'll do this again and then write down an equation to represent some of these. Start with this one. This is the, the red one from the same as before. Let's write the equation for this and then look at some of the characteristics of this one. Try and write the, the, the S of T equals. And you can almost copy from the, the software there. Try and write the equation in a nicer way. S of T equals 4 pi 
all of this. 4 pi times by sine 2 pi 2 t plus 1 third sine 2 pi 6 t. I'll just write that and then we'll analyze or, or talk about some characteristics of that, that equation. Uh, I'll call it S2 of t because we'll have some others later. We had 4 over pi was the multiplier and all inside we had the first component of sine what do we have? 2 pi 2 t or simpler 4 pi t plus 1 third sine It was 2 pi 2 times 3 t, or 12 t, 12 pi t. And close the square brackets. That's the signal equation for the, the one that we just plotted with the, the two humps, combination of two components. But instead of the full 2 times pi times 2 t, just 4 times pi t, and you see the first component has a peak amplitude. If you expand the multiplication, the first component has a peak amplitude of 4 over pi. 4 over pi sine 4 pi t. Remember the general equation. A sine 2 pi f t plus the phase. It ignores the phase. The phase is 0 in these examples. So A sine 2 pi f t. What is A? 4 over pi, if we look at the two components. The first one, we'd say here, A is 4 over pi. And what is the frequency of this component? Someone said 4, no. Someone said 1, no. This component, this one. We split it into two sine waves. The general equation is A sine 2 pi f t. f is the frequency. So what value of f do we need to have? 2. 2 pi f t. 2 times pi times 2 times t gives us 4 pi t. So the frequency of the first component is 2, two hertz. The amplitude I should write units of, say, volts, but I'll, I'll be lazy and not write the units. We don't care at this stage. Sometimes we represent as volts, other times watts, or, or some power level. The second component, and the phase was zero. Let's write it just to be complete. The second component, the peak amplitude, if we multiply 4 times pi times 1 over 3, 4 times pi times 1 over 3. Let's keep it as that. Frequency of 12 pi t is 6 hertz. Because the general formula 2 pi f t. Don't forget that 2. Phase is also 0. So if we add 2 sinusoids with these parameters together we get this plot okay that's what we did there uh, note let's look at the frequencies the first component has a frequency of 2 hertz. The second component has a frequency of 6 hertz, which is an integer multiple of the other. This is 3 times 2. If we have such, then we can say that the resulting signal, the fundamental frequency, of our resulting signal, S2 of t, equals 2 hertz. It 
if the two components are frequencies such that one is or the others are integer multiples of one, then that one is the fundamental frequency of that S2 of t or the frequency of that signal. The frequency of S2 is 2 hertz. And we see that here. In one second, there's two repetitions. We can say now that S2 contains two components. A component with frequency 2 hertz and a component with frequency 6 hertz. And they have different amplitudes. We chose the amplitudes to get that nice shape such that if we keep adding them in that way, we'd eventually get a square wave. But it's not always like that. The range of frequencies inside S of 2, or the set of frequencies, maybe I'll, sorry, don't copy. The set of frequencies. The set of frequencies in S2 of t are 2 and 6 hertz. That is, S2 of t is made up of two sinusoids. One has a frequency of 2 hertz, one has a frequency of 6 hertz, so we can say the set of frequencies in this signal are 2 and 6 hertz. We call that the spectrum of the signal. The set of frequencies inside a signal is called the spectrum. So we can say the spectrum of S2 is 2 and 6 hertz. And uh, so we're introducing some characteristics that we'll use to talk about signals. A spectrum is one thing. The fundamental frequency we'll refer to sometimes. The, uh, let's say, the width of the spectrum The width of the spectrum is that, okay, the spectrum contains 2 and 6 hertz. The width is the difference between the minimum frequency component and the maximum. In this case, there are just 2, 2 and 6. What's the width? What's the width? What's the difference between 6 and 2? 4. So we say the width of the spectrum, the spectrum ranges from 2 all the way up to 6. The width how wide is it? Is 4 hertz. What's the name of that? We refer to the width of the spectrum as bandwidth. The width of the band of frequencies. So we say the bandwidth of S of 2 is 4 hertz. And this will be an important parameter when we talk about real signals, the bandwidth of a signal. So, with any communication signal, it doesn't how, matter how complex the shape is, in theory, it can be broken down into the addition of sine waves, of sinusoids. And each of those sinusoids have a frequency. So we can determine the spectrum of that signal and the difference between the minimum frequency component and the maximum frequency component is the bandwidth of that signal. So we can talk about for some signal it has some bandwidth. And as we go through this topic we'll see that the bandwidth can impact upon some practical things like data rate. How many bits can we send per second? 
the bandwidth will have a role in that. But we're not there yet. Any questions before we do a next example? Simple concept so far, but just looking at the very fundamentals of signals. Let me know if there's some errors in the calculations or there's some questions about the writing. Let's go back to our plot. That was with two components. I'll do the green one with three components. Sine 2 pi 2t, two 1 third sine 2 pi 2 times 3t, 1 fifth sine 2 pi 2 times 5t. All multiplied by 4 over pi at the front. The green one which has those three humps at the top. And we kept adding components until we got close to a square wave. Write the equation for the green one and determine its spectrum, fundamental frequency and bandwidth. Okay, the question, how do we get the fundamental frequency? S2 of t, the red one, had two components, frequency of 2 hertz and 6 hertz. This component is an inter integer multiple. The frequency is an integer multiple of this component. This frequency, 6 hertz, is 3 times 2 hertz. In that case, when all the components are all integer multiples of another, that, uh, that one is the fundamental frequency. This is 1 times 2, this is 3 times 2. The fundamental frequency, therefore, is 2 hertz. And the signals in these simple examples will have a fundamental frequency that we can easily determine. Write the equation for the green one. Write the equation, determine the fundamental frequency, spectrum, and bandwidth of the green signal. It's the same as the previous one plus another component. Write it down, just so you understand the, the structure of this signal. And maybe if it's hard to read, it's hard to read in the, the, for this software, I'll help you by writing it. It's the same as the first one, but there's a third component. 1 over 5. See if we can fit it in. Let's call it S3 of t. I'm going to have to squeeze some things in here because we'll run out of space. 4 over pi was the multiplier out the front. Sine, what do we have? 4 pi t plus 1 third sine 12 pi t That was the same as before, plus one fifth. What's the 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 third component? One fifth sign what? And if, if you can't remember from the, the software, you can work it out by the pattern. The first component was 2 pi 2t, two, 2 pi 2 times 3t, 2 pi 2 times 5t, 20 hertz. Uh, tw not 20 hertz, 20 pi t.
three components. The peak amplitudes of component one, two, and three, just the multipliers out the front. Find the frequencies of each component, the frequencies of component one, two, and three. Two, six, and ten. From before, two and six. 10, 20 pi t, the general formula is 2 pi f t, so f must be 10, 10 hertz. Six hertz, this was from before, and 10 hertz. then find those three parameters of that resulting signal. Yep. How do we get 20 pi? Uh, if we look at our plot, let's see if I can zoom in little bit. Maybe hard to see, but the way that I created the plot, sine 2 pi, okay, the last five minutes, let's keep it down and just explain so everyone's clear. Okay, just wait one minute. Just wait one minute, just so others can hear. The, the way that I created it, I followed some pattern. Sine, ignore the multiplier for a moment, sine 2 pi 2t. Our general formula is sine 2 pi ft, so f is 2 in this case. The next one was one third of the height and 3 times the frequency. Sine 2 pi 2 times 3t, or sine 2 pi 6t. That's the pattern I was following. following. One third of the height three times the frequency of the first component. And the next one, and I have to zoom back out. Where'd it go? One-fifth sine two pi two times five t. See the pattern? One-third, three times two, one-fifth, 5 times 2, and if I added another one, it would be 1 seventh, 7 times 2. The frequency of this second component is 6, 2 times 3. Of the third component, the frequency is 10, 2 times 5. Not all signals have that pattern. I just chose it so that if we kept going like that, we would get a perfect square wave. Fundamental frequency, component 1, 2 hertz, component 2, frequency of 6 hertz, component 3, 10 hertz, they're all integer multiples of 2 hertz. 2 times 1, 2 times 3, 2 times 5, so they're all integer multiples of this other one, F1, so the fundamental frequency is still 2 hertz in this case. The spectrum is the set of frequencies inside this signal. And I'll just write it as 2, 6, and 10 hertz. Give us, giving us a bandwidth of what? So I've heard two numbers, 8 and 4, I think. 10 minus 2, the width. So from the minimum to the maximum. The bandwidth is 8 hertz.
And if you draw the next one with a, another component, we will not. 1 over 7. What would the fourth component be? 1 over 7. 2 pi 2 times 70, which is what? 28. I will not write it down, but if we had 1 over 7, 2 times pi times 2 times 7, 2 times 7 is 14 times 2, 28 pi t. The frequency of the fourth component would be 14 hertz, 14 hertz. And the bandwidth would be up to 12 hertz. As we'll continue, so we'll stop there, as we'll continue next week and then we'll start to see that the bandwidth of a signal can impact upon the data rate, how fast we can send bits. And it may also impact upon the cost of using that signal. So we'll come back to see why the bandwidth and spectrum are important next week. Questions?